Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. Oh, all right, Saturday, Saturday afternoon here in Australia, and boom, the markets have taken a huge tumble down, 8.2 percent, and we are way under that two trillion dollar mark, and down to where I did suspect we were going to go. I said I thought we'd come down to the 1.7 sort of three ish mark thereabouts. I think we actually dipped below it, uh, and now we're up ever so slightly. I think from there. But massive, massive move, 8.2% down. Look, Bitcoin dominance rising a little bit, so getting up back towards that kind of 40-ish percent. Again, people panicking. Lots of volume, which is nice, though. So money has come in, even though money's going out, which is, uh, you know, again, we'll have to wait and see. We see this, and we've been seeing it for a while. When it's really red, the volume comes in, and the next few days, it just rolls over again. So again, is the bottom in? That, that's the million-dollar question. Uh, and the truth is no one really knows. We can just, you know, make some what we would hope to be educated guesses based on a whole factor of things. You know, the world economy, how it's all traveling, you know, things that are going on with the Fed and what the charts are kind of looking like and things like that. You've got to take a holistic view on trying to work it out. In my personal opinion, that's not financial advice, but again, we'll 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 continue on in this vlog and you can tell me whether you're thinking the same as me or different from me. And let me know at the end if you think, uh, you know, that what I think is happening is at least somewhat correct or nowhere near correct or, you know, whatever. I'd love to know your thoughts. I mean, if you're tuning into my videos, I guess you're at least half like the stuff that I'm putting out there. All right, Bitcoin price, $36,000. Woof getting very close to that number that I was suspecting that we might get, get to. Gas prices are... Uh, up a little bit, I think, from the other day. We're at $6, so up a little bit. But, uh, yeah, still kind of, they're not cheap, but they're not uh, as expensive as what they were. And it's because people are panicking at the moment and just don't really know what to do. All right, last 24 hours, has anything done well? This will be interesting. All right, small recoveries on some things. So Maker Dow has had a tiny little bump right there to 1900, and then we're into the US dollar peg kind of coins. So really, virtually no gains whatsoever in the top 100. All right, what about losses then? This is going to be interesting. Cadena, nearly 20%. Theta been brutalized. Convex Finance hammered. One Harmony. Luna has been, you know, knocked around. Just, I mean, look at that double digits. Engine, Rose, Gala, Shib, I mean, absolutely slaughtered. Uh, Loopring, and not just recently, I mean, for quite some time now, I've been continuing to go down. So, you know, whoever bought all that Shib a while ago, I hope they, and they had $6 billion there for a while, I hope they took some serious profits. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're probably still well in profit, but... Uh, has gone down quite substantially. So double digit gains. I mean, look, still double digit, still double digit, still double digit. And we get to our first single digit here. I mean, whew, that is big. 169, very interesting price for Aave because I did say around that 169, 170 kind of mark. I thought was a, a reasonably good buy. Now, again, I'm never offering you financial advice. I'm just saying that looked like a pretty good buy based on the past. But that is dependent on what happens in the future as well. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and again, I'm going to let you know what, what I'm currently doing. I'm sure you already know if you've been watching my videos, but we'll go over it again. But look, the losses are substantial right across the board. Are we going to get a bounce though? Right. So let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. This is almost playing out perfectly. I've had this chart here for ages. Now, I don't know if we're going to get that spot Bitcoin ETF approval anytime sort of soon. Uh, it sounds like it's more like probably going to happen till March. Now, this could still roll out till March, but it also might not happen. We might not get a bounce here or down here where I thought we were. We may come down to 28,000 before we get a bounce. But even then, we need to consider we may be in a bear market, ladies and gentlemen. I still don't believe we are. And Here's the problem, is you never believe you're in one until you're basically really at sort of the bottom or pretty close to the bottom. And then you go, all right, we were in a bear market. <laughs> you know, At least that's the way it's been for me. Now, I've already taken 
uh, some profits earlier on. So I'm all right, don't get me wrong, I didn't take tons of profits as always. It's a whole lot easier to buy than it is to sell and I'm not very good at selling. But I took enough profits and I'll let you know I have been buying some cryptocurrencies in the last two days and I'll let you know uh, exactly what that was. But again, this chart is playing out at the moment. Is 34-ish thousand, 32 and a half thousand going to be the bottom? All this kind of $28,000 uh, range just here. Because the scary thing is if we don't get a bounce from here, then I really do think this kind of range is probably uh, not too far off, around 24000 Now, what will be interesting is because things have changed a little bit, are we going to go lower than an old previous high of about 19 to 20,000? Is that something that we can do? Because the charts are different, but at the same time, they're still kind of the same, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll get into that very shortly as well. Uh, got a process I've got to follow for everything to kind of make sense, but we'll get into that. But again, so far, this seems to be playing out. Will this occur? Will we get down to here, this CME gap, and then get a bounce from there? And maybe not exactly there. Maybe we come down to 28, but again, maybe we only get a candle close down into here, and then we get a big massive wick like that that pushes down and touches something like this. Interesting. All right, Ethereum, have a look at this. Whew. Went straight through. I was saying, will it hold over here and not roll over? And it's come through my $2,600 uh, $2, $2, price target as well. So I bought some Ethereum today, uh, some Bitcoin today, and some Ethereum yesterday, and some Bitcoin yesterday as well. And so I'm just constantly putting in uh, buy targets. And so for me, the next level I'm sort of looking at is around about here. And again, it's just around about $2,150-ish. So for me, I go just a little bit higher. So I'm going to say 2000 sort of 60 ish dollars but what you need to remember is it could sort of get somewhere to around about here it might bounce from here as well so it's hard to know exactly so and again never financial advice but i think a buy order in around 2300 and say 25 ish dollars wouldn't be bad i think another one around 2145 ish dollars again just above where these lines are because sometimes they only just wick down to them and you've got to be you know lucky to kind of get them but the candle body closes can be better now what we need to keep in mind is if this doesn't hold if we lose that kind of 2100 dollar mark then we need to start looking at prices more down around about here i think so 1800 i mentioned this the other day and then maybe even down to sort of here 1700 dollars Again, what will be interesting is if we're going to come down and break an old all-time high, because I think we got to 1300 in the last uh, bull cycle, and you know the good cryptos have never done that, gone lower than old all-time kind of previous peak cycles, so we'll have to wait and see. But again, I reckon a buy for Ethereum at the moment, yeah, sort of 2335 thereabouts. And then, yeah, another one, 2150-ish, somewhere about there, uh, are looking like good buy orders. But again, ladies and gentlemen, that's not financial advice. I'm just telling you what's looking good to me, and I'm letting you know I've already got buy orders in around about there. I can't remember the exact prices. A minor in Australian dollars, but thereabouts. And again, they're just small ones. I'm not, I don't know where the market's going, ladies and gentlemen. I really don't know. In the long term, I believe we're going up and substantially up. It's just in the kind of day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month. That's really hard to pick. But what I like to do is buy things at a discount and good projects. Now, will every project I put money into last and do well? No, absolutely not. No one ever uh, gets that. Every single you know trader, investor, whatever you like, is going to get make mistakes and going to get picks wrong. So I don't know. And I'm not saying Ethereum will or won't make it. I think it's more likely to make it, but it's not guaranteed. But that's why I've got uh, positions in other projects as well. But I like Ethereum, so I've bought in the last two days. And again, I've got some buy orders in just a little bit above there, just a little bit above there. And then we start to look somewhere around about here. Again, you know, 1970 ish dollars. You can put another one in down around about here, 1855 ish dollars. And then again, another one down around about here, 1720 ish dollars thereabouts. And just keep layering in your buy orders because what you need to remember is 
if you put four hundred dollars into Ethereum here at two thousand six hundred and let's say fifty dollars, and it continues to go down, and you put another four hundred dollars in here, and it doesn't have to be four hundred dollars; it can be four dollars, two dollars, whatever you can afford. And I'm not, trust me, I don't have four hundred dollars to keep chucking in at every level either. I'm just saying you put in buy orders. We'll go one hundred dollars, just a round even number. A hundred here, 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 and a hundred here. I think that was about five different places. I said you've put in five hundred dollars. Every time it gets back up to somewhere where you just bought, the five hundred dollars you put in has now just doubled because it's equaled that price. Now, not your total of all you've put in, just how much you put it that in. So it gets back up to here. Well, you put in $500 there. Well, now you've got $1,000 because it's doubled. And then again, when it gets up to here, you put in another 500. So that 500 is also doubled as well. And that's how you get the exponential gains. No one can pick the exact bottom, ladies and gentlemen. I literally mean no one, at least not regularly. You can fluke it. You can get pretty close. But absolutely picking the tops and bottoms, it just doesn't happen. No one can do it. If they could, everyone would have their money being invested by that person or that entity. It just doesn't happen. So I've laid in my buy orders and I will continue to do so. But nothing crazy. What happens if we're in a recession, ladies and gentlemen? And we could be, who knows? I don't think so. But if we are, then all of these prices could be super eroded. And it could take us five or ten years to get out of it. I don't know. So I'll just keep chipping away. All right, total market cap, look at that. I did say I suspected it'd come down to about sort of 170. And look, we wicked down below. I mean, we got down to almost $1.6 trillion and now we've pushed up and now we're just holding here. Now to see if we can come down to where I suspected we might, which is the 1.3-ish trillion dollar mark. Are we gonna come that low? I don't know, Bitcoin is already, again, not too far off my kind of target price of around about 34K. And again, it looks down low in this and the total market cap looks the same. But what you need to remember is Bitcoin doesn't make up as much of the market cap anymore. So when we look at the total market cap, I don't know if we're going to come down to here unless we're truly in a bear market. I mean more if we're going to get a bounce. I'd say the total market cap will probably get down to somewhere around about sort of in and about here. 1.6 to 1.5 trillion. If Bitcoin bounces at that CME gap, then I think the rest of the market will follow. But what's scary is if we get a bounce down here, we need to break through this trend because we might not. We might come up to it, get a bounce, and then roll over. So something to consider and only consider is when we get a bounce, and we will get a bounce, consider taking some profits when it's going back up if you can't handle it, if you're really scared and think it's going that much lower because it's like this. See, you get a dust off and then you get a bounce. Well, this is where you want to start taking some profits if you're worried because look what happened. It went down, we got another bit of a bounce and then it went down, we got another bit of a bounce and it's gone down. So you're going to get opportunities to sell. But if you're selling at losses, you need to ask yourself, number one, were you invested in the right project? Number two, did you really do your research to be able to hold through this? They are the tough questions that everyone has to ask. And look, I did some uh, readjusting today. I got rid of some underperformers, things that hadn't performed well. So I didn't get rid of all of uh, my uh, GRT, so the graph. They just haven't done so well. So I had a few graph left over and I put that into, I think I put it into some sand and SNX. SNX is way down, but I still believe in it. I think it's a really good project. That's just me. You make your own mind up and I'm not telling you to rush out and buy anything or get into any projects that I like. I just know that SNX is at a really big discount from where it's at. It's down, I think, 75, 85%. And that is usually a pretty good place to start looking at altcoins when they've retraced, if you believe they're a good project. That doesn't mean they can't go lower. That doesn't mean that synthetics uh, is a really good project. You know, only smart minds would know, but I think it is. So, all right, keep that in mind. All right, what I want to have a look at is the four-year cycle. A lot of people have been saying it's dead. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Bitcoin peaked in 2013 in November. Bitcoin peaked in 2017 in December. What if Bitcoin just did peak in November 2021? 
very interesting. Maybe the four-year cycles are still in and maybe we're in a bear market and now we got to come all the way down to roughly kind of, you know, I mean, if we did it today, it'd be about 24000 for a fair value. But remember, sometimes it goes under. We've had times where it goes under. So is this what's happening or is this, again, just a bit of a, a pullback before we start to go higher again? It's like just something to consider because even I thought the four-year cycles are dead. And then I was like, hang on, if that, while they never play out exactly the same, if that was the top, then the four-year cycles are still fully in play. But they just never look exactly the same. They've always, again, people are saying this, you know, was the double bubble. We had a double bubble. It just wasn't the same kind of double bubble. <sighs> very interesting. Very, very interesting. Because if this springs and goes higher, then it'll be a triple bubble, which is, again, something new that we haven't seen. If it doesn't and we do just slowly continue, you know, tr kind of go down, then... The four-year cycle is still in play and we just saw a double bubble, just not exactly how we've seen it before. But in saying that, we saw a little bit of a double bubble sort of here on the way down. So yeah, something to keep in mind. All right, but again, so where's the safe haven asset? Like cryptocurrencies are getting absolutely destroyed and you know, there's people on Twitter laughing at the kind of cryptocurrency people saying, see, told you. Right, S&P, it ain't looking good. Have a look at that. I mean, it's just fallen off a cliff and it's gotten down close to this uh, sort of pocket where I thought it would get down to and I still think it'll make it down here. The scary part is that may not be the bottom. We may have to come even further down. So S&P 500, not the safe haven asset. Does it go down as much? No. Does it go up as much? Absolutely not. That's why I'm in crypto. I accept the downside is horrendous. Like 95% you can go down, but you can go up tens to hundreds of percent. You're just not going to get that in the stock market, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I prefer crypto. Not to say I don't own any stocks, but it's why I prefer crypto. All right, the Dow Jones Index. Same thing. Just falling off a cliff. Oh, God, look at that. And nearly getting down to where I thought it might find some support. But again, it may fall through that. And this is what scares me here. If we lose, if the Dow Jones loses kind of, what is it, the $33,649 level, there's only a couple of stops again. You know, you could still say that maybe we kind of stop down here, maybe we stop down here. But then all of a sudden, you start to look at this. This is the old all-time high before the crash of everything in 2020. So there's no safe haven asset. Now, Peter Schiff is out uh, trolling everyone at the moment because gold is up ever so slightly. But again, it's down from where it was in 2011. So it has been on the up and up for a couple of years now, but it's not flying up. So I'm not telling you to rush out and buy gold. I'm not telling you not to buy gold. You make your own decision. But it is down from where it was in 2011. So just be careful uh, with Peter Schiff. Anytime Bitcoin goes down, he likes to rub it in everyone's face. But its overall trend is it's been going up for a really long time. So keep that in mind. And again, all you need to do is look at that. This is Bitcoin since 2013. I mean, look at that. Imagine buying Bitcoin for $70 in 2013 and it's currently worth $36,000. It was nearly worth $70,000 only a few months ago. $70 to $70,000. That is a thousand X right there. Food for thought. All right. Um... Where were we? All right, yep. Fear and greed index, index super high. Now, <laughs> you want to buy when there's blood on the streets to make the big gains, but what you got to remember is just because there is blood on the streets doesn't mean it can't get a whole lot bloodier, ladies and gentlemen. A whole lot bloodier, and it's you know dependent on certain facts. Again, what happens if we're in a bear market? Then it can absolutely get worse. What happens if we're in a recession? then can definitely get worse. What happens if we're going to go into a great depression? 
then wow, things are seriously going to get bad. You need to sort of weigh all of that up and then ask yourself what you want to do. Don't worry about what other people are doing and what they think. You've got to make your own mind up. And I don't have the answers, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still in denial that we're in a bear market. And look, we may well be, but that's all right. I've been through bear markets before. I'm going to continue to dollar cost average into the projects I like. But if we go into a recession and especially a Great Depression, well, then... You know, I may have to be dollar cost averaging for a really, really long time. And then there's other things that you got to worry about, though. Can you keep your job? Can you feed yourself, feed your family and things like that? And really investing is probably the least of your concerns if you're in uh, definitely a recession, but uh, most particularly, you know, a Great Depression. Like, yeah, I don't know if investing is anything you, that you should be worried about if something like that is happening. But look how low we are. Currently down at a 13 we usually get bounces from here, but what you can see is you can bounce around in fear for a really long time, and we already have a bit of a spike there, but then we're just bouncing around. So it's not an automatic, well, it's low. That means I'll buy now and it's going up. No, nope. you can bounce around in down here for months and months and months and months and months before you get some upside, but then you get some downside again. It's not a guarantee, but we traditionally are very low compared to where we uh, have been and can be. So that's something to consider. Now, El Salvador purchased 410 more Bitcoins amid market drops. So Bukele, he's going hard and he's been quite smart about his buys. He is literally waiting for the dips before he comes in and buys. He, he's not sort of dollar cost averaging the way normal people are. He is literally getting his cash and looking at the markets and setting in buy orders because he put out a tweet a little while ago because uh, he said, damn, I missed the exact low buy. I think he missed it by a couple of hours or something. And then he said, nope, I was wrong. Didn't miss it. <laughs> El Salvador just bought 410 Bitcoin for only $15 million. Some guys are selling <laughs> really cheap. So it's going to be interesting to see if things like this pay off for him and Michael Saylor because they've really gone hard on Bitcoin and things are really difficult right now. I personally think long term they're going to be just fine. It's just the short to mid term we'll have to wait and see because Michael Saylor hasn't been so much buying the dip. He's more just been buying fairly regularly, but I think his average price is still about, excuse me, uh, in the 20,000s. So he's still in profit, just not as much as in profit as he was before. And look, he might be out buying more Bitcoin right now. We'll just have to wait and see. But again, they do it. I don't think uh, Nayib Bukele is buying it spot market. I'm pretty sure he'd be buying it OTC. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But he's buying. Now, this is uh, my Twitter. So if you don't follow my Twitter, uh, feel free to come over and have a look. I don't have a whole lot of people following me. So <laughs> it'd be nice to have some more people. But here's something I want you to think about. A lot of people talk about catching falling knives when markets are going down, and I agree that you don't want to catch it, but putting small amounts in as it goes down can pay off big time on the way back up. I just bought more Bitcoin at $36,859, and I'm not worried. Now also, here's one more thing I want you to remember, is if I've learned anything about markets, it's that no one really knows what's going to happen, only what is happening. So just keep that in mind. If you think you're going to go out there and find someone that's going to be able to tell you you know, exactly what's going on, you won't. And look, I've been right about some stuff and I've been wrong about some stuff as well. So, And I've said this on a number of my vlogs. You know, Don't take any one person or any one source's information as gospel. You really need to get a whole feel across a whole stack of different things. What's the news like? What's the sentiment like? What's the world economy like? You know, there's so many different things you need to take in a factor. You know, what are the charts saying? But remembering TA is only good until it's not. It's not an exact science. It doesn't tell you exactly where things are going. It's just thereabouts. All right, ladies. Uh, ladies. <laughs> Hopefully there are some ladies watching my channel, but also uh, gentlemen. That's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Very hard to be on that gain train at the moment unless you manage to short the market and congratulations to you. But that's a dangerous game. But also remember one man's trash, one man or woman's trash is another person's treasure. Everything is at a discount at the moment. 
We're going to wait and see whether it's the best discount you can get, though. Maybe the best discounts are still yet to come. All right, I'll see you next time.